morning and welcome everyone. This uh, topic is a continuous one because as we all know HPV brought this uh, recent movement, uh, the latest one, uh, for changing of the mind of the race. So, we are mind and why should we deem necessary to change the mind what exactly are we changing because as humanity uh, progresses we all think that this is the highest that we are most people think that the intellectual mind is the highest there is in fact scientific um, authorities do not go beyond the intellectual mind today and this is the 21st century this movement came at the end of the 19th so before we go further we need to understand that when we're in incarnation the mind is dual and we represent the higher triad which is our Spirit, the spiritual soul, and mind this way. And then this is our lower principles. This bit here represents the mind. If it goes up towards the spirit, it becomes divine. And going this way, it becomes animalistic. So, Theosophy is in the world, which is the wisdom of the ages, to show man who is in existence and is fighting for animal existence that there is a higher aspect to him, that he is not an animal as we are deemed to be, but still, if you turn the TV on, they're showing us coming from apes. And we have nothing to do with apes. They came from us. We do not come from them. The higher we go, we go towards divinity. We are divine human beings. And theosophy is in the world to show us that we are human and make us humane. and show us how to find the divine in us. So, this talk then is to show that we have a divine mind in us and that as we change this middle part, the whole nature changes. But I came across this little statement about truth, which is um, equivalent to wisdom which is equivalent to knowledge, which is equivalent to our higher selves. Truth is the voice of nature and of time. Truth is a startling monitor within us. Not is without it, it comes from the stars, the golden sun and every breeze that blows. So, and I put this picture here <laughs> to remind us that this is our world, this is the solar system. Now, in Theosophy, there is no separation in anything. We are part of everything. So we are indeed part of the solar system. We are tiny dots, as this system is a tiny dot in the Milky Way. So that is how we have to think of ourselves. As we open in a circular fashion, we understand um, who or what we are. So, what exactly is then cleansing the mind and the heart? Well, everywhere in the teachings we are told, control your actions, control your desires, and control your thoughts. Thoughts. But why and how? We just read in the voice of the silence 
And this is at the beginning of the book. This book is the last one that was written by the teacher and she addresses our divine selves in this book. She says, having become indifferent to objects of perception, how do we perceive? Eyes, ears, touch, all our senses. The pupil must seek out the Raja of the senses, the thought producer, he who awakes illusion. So here is the first page in this book showing us that we must overcome the elusive nature of the lower mind. What does the lower mind do? It repeats itself. If you put your thoughts uh, to your conscious scrutiny, you will find that it is automatic. You really don't have to do anything. It just repeats itself all the time. If you are um, concerned about something, it will preoccupy itself with that all the time. Regardless of what you want to do, the mind repeats itself. But we are told that's its natural state. This intellectual mind <laughs> repeats everything. Repeats. It goes toward motion. That's its nature. So, it repeats itself and it's a squirrel-like. Uh, it does not want to go anywhere higher. So, what is it we're controlling then? When we are told to find out who the Raja of the senses is and then get a control of it. This is not an easy thing to do, is it? No. No. So, this is what the advice is. She says, the mind is the great slayer of the real. Who is the real? What's real in us? Well, the triad is the real. The inner self, that the spirit soul, the monad, is the real essence in us. So this intellectual mind has overgrown so much. Why? Because it is attached to our kamic nature, which is passions, it is kamamanas in Sanskrit. And there is a reason why they say that. Because our passions and desires is what is the motion that gives it that repetitive power. This is what has become of it. But, it, but in its inner nature, it's pristine. It's clear, it's uh, bright, and it's evergreen. So it's just like the nature it's evergreen, but in humanity it has lost that, this, it has become something else. So, it's like the scaffolding. When we build a building, we have the scaffolding to support the, um, uh, what is it called, the base. Well, we put the scaffolding up, but we never took it down. Why? Because the higher mind is to come into this temple called the body and illumine the whole nature. But because of this intellectual mind being so busy and constantly wor over working overtime, thinking, 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 uh, and causing this motion. What is this motion we are talking? It's the electrical energy of the mind. And you can see it uh, on electrograms and other things. It does that. It is constantly in motion. When we go to sleep, when we go to sleep, it is quiet. And then the divine mind can impress it. So what they're asking us to do then is just that, learn to control it. Well, how should we do that? Well, there are different, way, different ways of doing it, but in this we're talking about Raja Yoga. So. It says here that each human being thinks differently. Is that not true? Of course it is. Because we have our own knowledge, experience, and consciousness based on what we have learned. So this is why we are all different. Because our experiences are different. So what is it that we do? We clash because we fight for our own whether it is our land, family, thoughts, ideas, or feelings. 
So, as we automatically do that, then we do not give that higher aspect of our mind to come in and take its natural place. So, how do we slay this mind of ours? It's very easily said, but it's not easily done. So, HPB in all of her writings tells us to dare to kill it. To dare. To dare to kill. Why don't we dare to kill it? This is the highest we know, this intellectual mind. But to get to the divine mind, which is our real nature, we have to kill it. How do we kill it? And why do we not want to kill it? Because it isolates us. It isolates the soul. In many books it is referred to as the isolation of the soul. And believe me, we do experience that in life. For instance, a loss of a loved one. Something that we thought was real and then we found out that it had no truth in it whatsoever. And we are dilapidated totally. We feel isolation then. And those we believe in, when they disappoint us, our world comes down crushing. And that kind of gives us an impression as to what isolation really is. But unless that loneliness and nakedness is experienced, we wouldn't know what that would feel like, that killing nature would be like. Because remember, all our preconceptions all our ideas have to be given up. We're killing it. And we have to start all over again. So this is why we find it extremely difficult to, to do it. But let us take sound as an analogy. When we're in this room, do we hear the sound on the outside in the street? Do we know what sound is going on in the city? Why do we not know it? Because we are attuned to a particular vibratory rate, frequency. So we only hear what we choose to hear. That inner sound is also there if we choose to hear it. What exactly is that inner sound referring to? Do you have a question? I do. What is it? <coughs> we hope things are interesting. Uh, can we wait till the end? Okay. So. That sound is called anahata in, in the heart. This is a real heart. It's Sanskrit. So the anahata has a sound. It's the soundless sound, but it is the sound. So what is she asking us to do? Attune ourselves to the inner sound. We, we just read it. We have to attune ourselves to the inner soul. It says, before the soul can hear, the image has to become as deaf to roarings as to whispers, to cries of bellowing elephants as to the silvery buzzing of the golden firefly. Before the soul can comprehend and may remember, she must unto the silent speaker be united, just as the form to which the clay is modeled is first united with the potter's mind, for then the soul will hear and will remember. Because every night when we go to sleep and this takes place, the brain is sleeping. It's asleep. It does not participate in our soul life. And when we come back, we do not remember it because there is no impression made on the brain because we decide we don't want to hear it. So we, in, or, in order to hear it, we have to decide we want to hear it. That's the first rule. And all the other things that we talked about also has to take place. 